fine. And if you go to a store, uh, regardless of whether there's a line or not, if you speak Shanghai, you can just go right to the front. And if you don't, then the um, uh, store clerks will, won't try to sell anything to you. Uh, and that was when people just take fixed salaries rather than base their performance on the sales. So all college students have to learn the local language very quickly and on your own. Nobody's teaching you, but every college student had to try to f at least pick up some of it. Um, otherwise, you have to be um, prepared to be a second-class citizen. So uh, for speakers of Shanghai, they would always try to sh demonstrate that they can speak the language. So they will always speak Shanghai whenever there is another person who can, regardless of who everybody else is. Uh, and keep in mind that if people from other parts of China don't understand Shanghai, so it's a totally, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly different uh, um, um, accent. So now, uh, Shanghai is still a leading city economically, so according to Baidu, the GDP tops all cities in the greater China area, past Hong Kong in 2009. It's the uh, second largest stock, stock market city, and the third largest stock market after uh, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, and second largest commodities market after Chicago, and largest port city in the world. Uh, now, the city has grown, so a large number of new residents, new arrivals uh, at all levels, and that's important. Uh, the dialect is much less heard on the street, and there is a, a casual saying that in the financial center, the dominant language is English. In the old city area, that's the first ring road, uh, you hear standard Chinese, Putonghua, and only in the suburbs do you hear Shanghai. Uh, there is also um, an alarming lack of use by children, um, as I would um, quickly uh, rever uh, re review a couple of studies. And so right now, Shanghai seems to be moribund, which means that when children of Shanghai parents stop learning the language, this language will die uh, in a generation or two. At least uh, it will cease to be uh, any kind of major language in the city. Uh, so uh, last year, there was a, a TV show where uh, people interviewed uh, children in a summer camp. Uh, they asked them some fairly common expressions and asked them to say them in Shanghai. And most children couldn't, uh, even if their parents were uh, Shanghai speakers. And this show triggered uh, many alarmed blogs uh, on the internet. Then, the TV uh, channel did another show where they had a competition with seniors, young people, teenagers, and uh, kindergartners. And seniors translated phrases 90% correct, young people 40%, teenagers a few, and kindergartners really got anything right. Um, there is another report that the Shanghai city government is aware of this. So the Shanghai city government is trying to document the language and preserve it. Uh, and so the city set up 14 recruiting centers for people who can speak authentic Shanghai. And only two of them found qualified candidates. Um, so it was another uh, sensational news. Um, now, let me say a little bit about what social linguistics is and what people do. Um, one major job uh, traditionally is to make dialect maps um, and so that you, you record and uh, geographically variation in pronunciation of vocabulary. Uh, more recently, 
social linguists also uh, try to study language attitude and uh, style choices. For example, there is a very famous study of the er or no er varieties in New York City. Uh, the er is the upper class pronunciation in New York, and the erless, like a park or then park, is a lower working class variety. And so, um, social linguists look at when people choose to use which. There is also the in in difference and i versus oi difference. Uh, there is occasionally prestige reversal. So in New York City, the er dialect used to be lower class uh, because the Northeast old uh, 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 colonial areas had er less pronunciation. But after Second World War, this pronunciation got reversed. So the er less accent became a lower class. It's worth keeping that in mind. Now, um, now, here are some examples. This is a dialect map of America. Uh, this is a dialect map of China. It takes a long time to do this. This is a dialect map of uh, how you say uh, Coke, soda pop, or... Uh, so uh, social linguists make uh, various things like this. Uh, now. Our study is somewhat different. We're trying to ask uh, 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 the language usage questions. Now, there have been uh, several studies on Shanghai, mostly are of small scale, and uh, they focus on specific groups. So for example, Zhou uh, 2001 asked college students what they think of, uh, college students in Canton and Shanghai, what do they think of people who speak standard Chinese? Now, Canton and Shanghai are very uh, discriminatory cities. Mm -hmm. So they're asking them whether they accept standard Chinese. Um, there is another study, 2007, who asked 100 immigrant children, migrant children in Shanghai, and what kind of language they would like to use. And then there is another more recent study, a PhD dissertation two years ago who again uh, interviewed uh, new residents in Shanghai and um, what they think of um, standard Chinese versus Shanghai. Now, uh, we want to ask uh, a slightly different set of questions. We want to have a balanced sampling of all residents. We want to look at the usage, a total usage of the language of the entire city at work or in school, at home and elsewhere. We also want to ask people's attitudes and their competence. And uh, we want to look at social economic factors. And we also hope to understand future trends. Now, this study has, um, you know, there are various difficulties. For example, how many people should we sample? Where should we do the sampling? Uh, when to sample, weekdays, weekends, time of the day, you know, calling people up or setting up desks on the street, and how do you get permissions for doing that, and whether you should uh, attract people to participate, are you going to give gifts, and what kind of gifts. We thought of um, soaps and uh, detergents, mm -hmm. but then we worried that people will keep lining up over and over again. <laughs> um, Real reliability of the residents, because still Shanghai is prestigious. Would everybody say, yes, I speak Shanghai? Uh, and reliability of the survey workers. Uh, we try to mobilize students as uh, for course credit. Would they just fill it up by themselves without going to the street? So there are all sorts of questions there. Now, this is. Finally, what we decided to do, uh, I taught a summer course there, and Ewan was my GSI. So we gave a class assignment. Everybody had to uh, survey 10 people. It's not a demanding job. Uh, we had 200 students in the class. We had um, close to 1,800 effective reply forms. Uh, we define residents as anybody who lives in Shanghai, uh, for three or more months right now, because everybody who 
easier for so long will contribute to the total usage of um, any language there. Uh, we surveyed every district uh, in Shanghai. We asked our um, students to try to look at people of all ages and um, both genders and all professions. Uh, we are aware that there are a lot of people who are busy. They will be working when our students are out. So we ask them to collect family information. So if you see an old man in the park, you ask information about all his family members, and we hope they will catch some of the people who are working there. And overall, our age distribution is fairly reasonable. It matches more or less to the Shanghai uh, age structure in the sensors. Uh, we divided our students into small groups, uh, three to four each, and we asked them to send us pictures of where they are, just to make sure that they are out there. <laughs> uh, so these are some of our students. And we also asked them to make a sign so that uh, the uh, residents will be more willing to uh, participate rather than you know people who try to sell things to you or um, be cheated by. So this is a supermarket. Uh, that person looks like a store manager. Uh, bank, when people are waiting, so they are more willing to uh, spare some time. A uh, newspaper seller, uh, when the business is not very busy. Uh, in the park, this person could look a little more interested. <laughs> but our uh, surveyors are very persistent. And we also have very enthusiastic respondents who try to teach our surveyors something, uh, offering all sorts of additional information about the language. So uh, we uh, got more or less balanced uh, gender in among our respondents. Uh, now this is a very strong indication of the uh, new residents in Shanghai. Of all the people we surveyed, only 45 of them um, spoke Shanghai as a native language. So more than half uh, were non-Shanghai speakers originally. Um, this is a picture of the languages they can speak as they report by themselves. Um, the self, uh, this is the number of group of people we surveyed. And these are their parents. So they are not necessarily in Shanghai. As you can see that. Um, most people can speak um, standard Chinese, and 60% also can speak Shanghai. And surprisingly, half of them think they can speak English, <laughs> and then various other languages. And notice that uh, the amount of English is very low for their parents. Um, the amount of Shanghai is about the same because these people are somehow related um, to the um, um, people we surveyed. Now, let me just quickly explain what I mean by usage. Uh, whenever we ask people whether you speak something, we ask them to uh, give us uh, a scale. So if you speak none, that's zero, one, and you always speak in usage we give a score of five, which would mean 100%. For competence, if you don't speak any variety, it's one, which is 0%. If you speak it fluently, it's 100%. So when we count usage, we count the, um, the equivalence average of all the people. So this is the average competence. Uh, you can see that the competence of Shanghai is um, about 50%. Notice uh, uh, native Shanghai uh, respondents were 45%. So there are a fair amount of people who are not natives can speak the language. Uh, English competence is really high. This is 100% equivalence. So about half of them speak perfectly. 
or more than half speak at least some amount. Uh, this is usage. Uh, standard Chinese, Shanghai, English, and other. Uh, at work or in school. Uh, at home. Um, else means not at work or school, not at home. So when you go buy something or when you're out on the street. So uh, the interesting thing about this is that um, at home, um, um, it's about half of the time people speak standard Chinese. Um, uh, OK, so at work, at home, or on the street is about 50% uh, or so. But um, this is at home. Uh, sorry, this is Shanghai, OK? Uh, at the workplace, a quarter of the time, people speak Shanghai. At home, only 40% of the time, people speak Shanghai. and uh, on the street, uh, one third of the times people speak Shanghai. Total usage. So if we count home or school as 50% of your time, uh, sorry, work or school, 50%, uh, the time at home is 30%, and then the rest is 20%, then this is the total usage. Imagine you can hear everybody speaking for the entire city and then you make the percentage of the time you count. So half of the time, you hear standard Chinese. 30% of the time, you hear Shanghai. And 10% of the time, you hear English. Uh, usage versus attitude. Um, the uh, attitude means uh, whether it's important or not. Okay, is, this, is it important to speak this language? Uh, notice, although 50% of the time people use standard Chinese, uh, people don't think it as important. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you can for a lot of people. Uh, the importance of Shanghai is also less than the actual usage, but this is a very um, uh, interesting uh, reversal. So even though only 12% of the time people use English, about 30% of the people think it's extremely important to be able to speak English. Uh, this is whether it's important for your children to speak a given language or not. Um, most people think it's important to speak, for the children to speak standard Chinese. And 60% of them still want their children to speak Shanghai, and 85% of the people want their children to speak English. Competence by gender. Um, this is interesting uh, in the sense that uh, females uh, do better than males in every category. <laughs> Now, this is uh, uh, fairly well known in social linguistics. Females um, tend to um, follow the trend more readily. They learn new languages, they pick up new fashion. They lead change. Uh, so this uh, is in agreement with um, the fact that female speakers are more innovative. Uh, this is education. Uh, we have uh, six scales, no education. I'm surprised there are still a uh, small number of people who said they had no education. Primary, uh, middle school, high school, college, and graduate students. A graduate degree could be working. Uh, what you can see in this diagram is that uh, the amount of standard Chinese goes up at blue bar uh, as the education increases. Uh, the amount of English also goes up very um, clearly. The amount of Shanghai 
Uh, the no educating categories probably uh, local residents. Uh, they speak a lot, but then once you start education, then your Shanghai is more or less the same amount. Uh, now it goes down in college and grad school, probably because people come from outside, uh, and so that is uh, expected. Uh, and also another trend fairly clear is that the, the home dialect goes down as your education goes up. Uh, competence by income. So what kind of languages can you speak versus your income level? Uh, five levels. Um, this, I thought the interesting thing about this picture is that if you speak more Shanghai, you're still richer in Shanghai mm -hmm. nowadays still. Uh, and the Mandarin uh, ability is fairly high already. There isn't much room to change. Uh, and also the English level goes up um, as your income level is. Uh, there is a surprising amount of English for the low end. Um, and when I look at the data, it's mainly because a lot of new college grads who say they are very poor. And so they have a college degree, but they say the low in income is low. So that's why there is high English versus low income. Now, let's consider the trend. Uh, this is a usage at work or in school uh, by age. Uh, now, if we assume that younger people represent the usage tomorrow, then you see that the usage of Shanghai really declines. Average is 30, we saw earlier, but primarily by older people. Uh, when you reach 20 or so, and people uh, under 20, under 30, only 20% of the people speak Shanghai nowadays. The usage of Mandarin is still fairly high, and there is a steady increase of English usage. All the other home dialects remain low. Now, this is interesting. Remember that at the beginning, uh, among all our respondents, half of the people, slightly less, are native Shanghai speakers. So 60% of them speak something else as their native language. But all the native languages remain very low. This really means that everybody who goes to Shanghai give up your native language pretty much effectively. And this is what Shanghai locals are doing. Uh, this is uh, usage at home. OK, still, uh, the trend is similar. Uh, older people speak a lot of Shanghai at home, and then younger ones speak less. Right now, uh, it's 30%. So it's not as bad as the TV shows uh, try to say. Uh, there is still a fair amount. But we didn't really get to very small children. We mixed all the 5 to 20. Uh, so it might still be true that uh, small children under 10 would um, perhaps go down to 20% or even 10%. Uh, and this is usage on the street. Um, again, Mandarin increasing, English increasing, Shanghai uh, decreasing. Language importance. So how important do you think it is to speak standard Chinese, Shanghai, English, or your native dialect? Most people, uh, sorry, this is hard to say because people got uh, uh, I think this is, yeah, th this is overall. You know, most people on average didn't seem to rank their home dialect very highly. On uh, average competence, um, young people again, uh, competence of standard Chinese and English are increasing. Competence of Shanghai is going down. Now, 
what are the factors that led to the dramatic change? I hope the, the, the graphs really give you a very clear picture of the decline of Shanghai. Now, uh, clearly, immigration is, uh, sorry, migration is a major factor. Uh, there seem to be a criti critical mass already. So all the service industries, uh, stores and uh, vegetable markets, mostly you will encounter people who speak standard Chinese. They are not Shanghai uh, natives. So they use standard Chinese among themselves. And then there is no bias anymore. If you don't, if you don't speak Shanghai, you don't feel prejudiced by most of the people you come across. And then there is increased functionality. So it doesn't matter. Uh, increase, uh, increase functionality of other languages and the decreased functionality of Shanghai. Uh, there is also a prestige change. So uh, in uh, Lee's dissertation, he uh, interviewed some uh, elite class, white collar, managerial level people. Uh, many of them only speak standard Chinese and English. They don't speak Shanghai. And they were asked about their uh, impression of Shanghai speakers, managers. And they said that most of them felt that if you're a manager level person and if you speak Shanghai, you typically represent a state-owned enterprise, which is not doing very well. But if you speak standard Chinese or English, you very often come from a, a foreign-owned enterprise or joint venture enterprise. So there is a there is a prestige change from the very top. Um, people very often also mention policy. So uh, there is a, a government policy of no Shanghai in school. So the instruction language is it's all standard Chinese. But the effect of this is not very clear to us because policy has always been there. Um, and uh, it hasn't really uh, changed that much. Media exposure is another possibility, but we uh, really didn't, uh, weren't able to study that uh, in this study. So um, what are the implications? Well. Um, the speed of language loss can be very fast. One generation or two um, will um, just lead to a total loss of uh, dominant language. Um, so would similar things happen to other major um, dialects, the city? So for example, would Cantonese um, be next? Uh, would uh, Taiwanese also uh, give way to standard Chinese? Now, I ask people casually in Canton and Hong Kong and say, you think there is a danger? And everybody said, no, 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 there isn't any. If you ask people in Shanghai 20 years ago, nobody would say Shanghai would uh, die out at all. But anecdotal uh, evidence from uh, Taipei shows that the usage of standard China, um, Guo Yu as a standard Chinese is really increasing um, very fast, and uh, Minnan Hua is decreasing really. Um, so it'll be interesting to take a look at these uh, two places, see if uh, CCS continue to support our effort. Uh, there is another uh, important implication there. According to the uh, United Nations, 90% uh, of the world's languages will die in the next 30 years because the dominant number of languages in the world are uh, fairly uh, small or threatened by uh, new socioeconomic development. Now, what are the reasons that lead to the, uh, s the declines uh, so Shanghai is interesting because it's a large language, and it's a very prestigious language, and it could go out in 20 years. Now that really tells us a lot of things. Uh, one of the uh, 
unfortunately is that perhaps there is just no hope to stop it. And people should uh, maybe uh, uh, put their effort in the documentation and uh, uh, preservation, record preservation of these languages, rather than setting up schools and you know require them to go to schools and to have to learn this language. It usually doesn't have much uh, reception from the people. So uh, summary, um, Shanghai is in fast decline, both in usage and in importance of prestige. Major factors seem to be um, increase in newcomers, decrease in functionality, and decrease in prestige. Rising languages are um, standard Chinese and English, both in usage and importance. Uh, and Shanghai is not the only person who is paying a price. Like Shanghai, all native dialects of newcomers are giving up way, uh, are giving way to um, Putonghua and English. Now, are people concerned? Well, overall, um, there seem to be resigned acceptance. There is much nostalgia and concern from older Shanghai natives. Uh, they are probably the last generation out. But for everybody else, it's mostly indifference for newcomers because they are giving up their own native language too. Now, Zhou Li Bo's um, comment uh, is kind of interesting in this regard. Zhou Li Bo is a comedian who uh, specializes in the Shanghai dialect, so he makes a living uh, <laughs> by using language. He's a very strong advocate for preserving Shanghai. He says that the loss of a local dialect is a loss of local culture. That's true, and very strong. However, he said when you go to a restaurant nowadays, you cannot speak Shanghai because people won't understand you. And therefore, this is a price we have to pay for globalization. OK, so I want to leave some time for questions. I'd like to uh, thank my uh, students and uh, thank all the Shanghai residents who participated in this study.